alive, there were two fossil whales, two different species of fossil whales that had been found. And everyone assumed that they had descended from land animals, everyone who believed in evolution. Uh, but there were no intermediates <clears throat> until the 1990s when a small, about a wolf-sized land animal was found in Pakistan that didn't look at all like a whale, but <clears throat> it had a bone in its ear, in its middle ear, that up to that point had only been found in whales and dolphins, which go by the Latin name cetaceans, from the Latin word for whale, cetus. So this wolf, solely on the basis of that ear bone, was named Pakacetus, or Pakistani whale, even though for all other intents and purposes it was like a wolf. <clears throat> so it became the supposed ancestor of whales, and in the years following, other fossils were found, mostly around Pakistan, uh, of, uh, well, for example, one was found that had feet, walked on all fours, but it had a long tail like a river otter as well. And it was named Ambulocetus natans, or walking, swimming whale. <clears throat> and then some other fossils were found, and pretty soon uh, there was a series of them. And the ones between Pachycetus and the modern fully aquatic whales were called walking whales because they had feet and were apparently able to walk on land. Uh, Stephen Jay Gould at one point called this the sweetest series of transitional fossils an evolutionist could ever hope to find. So in uh, my book, Zombie Science, I have a chapter on the so-called walking whales. Uh, the problem with the series, the fossil series, which is supposed to be, you know, everything an evolutionist could hope for, <clears throat> is that the so-called walking whales are actually more like sea lions or, or sea otters than whales. They live mainly on land, they give birth on land. Uh, certainly they spend a great deal of time in the water, but whales have to spend their entire lives in the water. Uh, and that requires something quite different from what, what it takes to make a sea lion or, or a sea otter. Uh, <clears throat> whales, uh, true whales, that is fully aquatic whales, have flukes, uh, that's their tail. It looks like a flipper, but it's not a flipper. It's not a passive, piece of skin like a, a skin diver's flipper would be. It's actually uh, full of tendons that connect it to muscles in the back of the whale, in the tail, the, the full tail. And uh, the fluke is the, therefore active in driving the whale through the water. It's not just a passive flipper. Uh, the whale's lungs are very different from land animals. They actually collapse when the whale dives. They have uh, liquids inside them that enable them to reinflate very rapidly when the whale comes to the surface. <clears throat> Whales breathe through, as you know, blowholes on the top of their heads, which is quite different from a sea lion or a sea otter. Whales have to uh, give birth underwater, they have to nurse underwater, uh, and all of these things require adaptations not found in land animals. So the gap between the so-called walking whales and the true whales anatomically is really quite large. Recently, a, a whale was found in Antarctica. Actually, it was found a while back, but just reported, fully reported recently. The problem with the whale evolution story, or one big problem with it, <clears throat> is that the time in the fossil record between the, the terrestrial animals, the walking whales, and the fully aquatic whales is very, very short. Uh, before this recent find, it was thought to be two to eight million years, which may sound like a lot, but it's not when you consider all the anatomical changes that have to happen. But this recent find of a fully aquatic whale in Antarctica actually shortens that time considerably, down to a million years or less. So in a very short period of time, these animals uh, had to turn from being living mainly on the land to living entirely in the water. That's quite a change to happen in such a short time. <laughs>